All right, I'm going to finish up now with um, uh, the first uh, 10 uh, short sections from uh, a long portion of the Zeno text uh, in progress, uh, a poem uh, entitled Colony Collapse Disorder, uh, a poem written uh, in response to uh, one of the oldest, most beautiful uh, poems uh, ever written, uh, Book Four of the Georgics, which is a, a, an account of the myth of Orpheus and Eurydice. This is just the first uh, few sections from Colony Collapse Disorder. Airborne honeydew sweetens my spirit with a perfume that by divine decree hath enticed me to perform these sonnets for thee, my maestro Gaius Mycenaeus. Study with grimness the plight of puny gods, warlords in a day-long dynasty whose sieges and jihads I must be laud in song. Scant be my labor, but not my reward, if Apollo favors these rhymes. Annex first to the hive, a haven blind to winds that hinder foragers in flight, then suffer neither yak nor you to trek across these meadows, nor oxen to dash away the dew from phloxes and grasses. Disperse from thy honeyed stalls the gaily tinted geckos, then repel the red plumed bee eaters which echo flocks of swallows, the progeny of Procne, her blouse still bloody from her filicide. Let no throng of songbirds indulge in such butchery, by which a bee tweezed in a beak is fed to savage broods like a dainty morsel. But let some streamlet of meltwater run near mossy pools of greenery. Then let the fronds of betel palms or olive trees drape each entryway to thy catacomb, where from the oligarchs at dawn deploy their convoy of drones on vernal forays. Thistles and brambles by the riverside beckon thy scouts from the heat of battle to rest a while in hidden groves of shade. Upon the shallows, whether swift or still, place a willow bough or a paving stone, a footbridge for the flyers that alight to preen each winglet made of diaphane. For Eurus often bids the sudden breeze to douse such envoys in spritzes of mist or drown such pilots in speckles of rain. Let flower beds of basil, thyme, and clove overgrow these clover fields, the fiefdoms of the hive heavy laden with the musk of violets, overwhelming thy wellsprings. Contrive that the ingress to the sanctum of the bees be narrow, made from woven osiers or cedar braids, for summer heat can soften firm taffies and winter cold can curdle warm jellies, both disastrous for these denizens who must fix a hole in each wall of wax, filling this fissure with their pollen, then sealing the crevice with their saliva, a spittle which binds more fast than any glue, be it coal tar or pine gum from the hills of Phrygia. True to fame, all bees at home in foxholes can nest in the clefts of each hollow karst, if not in the chinks of some fallen birch. Thatches of adobe and straw, if daubed like grout about the doorway of a tomb, can delay the loss of heat from the cribs. But when near this bivouac of the bees, be certain to abstain from the charring of yew trees or the roasting of red crabs. Abandon all scrublands ruled by decay, bayous which echo the ring of a rock if struck, or the bray of a buck if killed. When sunbeams in summer hath evicted the vanguard of winter, thereby ousting the gloom to reclaim a heavenly strength, Forthwith do these hoverers in wetlands quiver over every bloom by the stream. Orphaned at birth, the children enlisted in thy army learn the roster of chores fulfilled by the swarm, slaving together to build more hexagons for the barracks. When sprightly, these militias fly skyward, marvel at their feral cloud expanding and diffusing like smoke above a blaze. They seek fresh waters and leafy bowers. Hence, surrender unto them thy tributes, bestrewing hither the hints of sweetness, 
crumbly balsams and opulent hyssops. Then let the zephyrs caress thy sleigh bells, the wind chimes of Sibylle summoning all the bees to slumber in their cradles. Crusades, however, can spur the unrest of dormant legions bestirred in the hive when rivalries arise between twin foes contending for ascendance to the throne. Notice from afar this call to slaughter which must sway the fey mob of rioters, their hearts athrob with pending warfare. Hearken to the brazen scrolls that rebuke the late comers, unequipped for battle, each blast of the trumpet inciting them to muster themselves to flex their wings, to knit their thews, rehoning each stinger to rally around the camp of their king and by their shouts defame all infidels. Lowlands in spring become a battlefield for these insurrectionists who surge forth from their fortress, igniting a skirmish whereby they commingle in a berserk cluster, a crazed vortex of multitudes more numerous than all the bits of hail falling like acorns shaken from an oak during a windstorm, ornately shielded the winged moguls barge into this melee, their pygmy hearts full of godly malice, each vowing to show his twin no mercy until some victor swats aside all blows. A fistful of dust thrown into this fray can quell the frenzy of such insurgents. Subpoena this pair of brawling kingpins from their arena, but condemn to death the Khan, more crippled by his injuries, lest he prove too hindersome to the hive. Then enthrone at once the better despot, the one with a golden helmet that shines. For twofold is his kin, the great hero who wags a killing sting, and the elder lord who lugs a swollen belly, all bees alike unto men. Some some crude, some noble, like the sun-cursed pilgrim in the desert, hating his downtroddenness in the dust, or the sun-graced esquire in the garden, loving the delightsomeness of his gold. High-born are the dryads of this feudal father, who in summer lets his maidens filter honey, thin and pure like cognac, mellowing the muscatels of Bacchus. But if such ruckus makes thy dizzy serfs forego their tasks to frolic in the skies, all their forsaken pantries left unfilled, then extract the pinions of the patron so that if unwinged he must malinger, his minions unwilling to move his flag. Let lees of fragrant saffrons lure the bees homeward and put thy faith in Priapus to safe keep the propolis with his scythe fending off raids by Martins and looters. Thank you one and all. <laughs> <laughs>